In this video, we'll be exploring the functions and features of the Fujikura 41S Plus that enable efficient, low-loss fusion splicing. We'll also go over some helpful tips and tricks for improving your splice process. To recap, the cladding alignment method of aligning fibers is where the splicer's cameras are fixed to a predetermined focus position and use the cladding edges of both fibers to center one fiber to the other. Cladding alignment has two subsets, passive cladding alignment and active cladding alignment. The 90R is an example of passive cladding alignment since the ribbon V grooves are fixed in place. In contrast, the 41S Plus is an active cladding alignment splicer, having individual motors for moving the V grooves to align the fibers together. The active cladding alignment method produces fantastic results, but alignment and loss estimation accuracy are limited by the manufacturing precision of the fiber since the cores themselves can't be brought into focus and subsequently aligned. When you open up your 41S Plus case, you'll likely have a kit that looks like mine, which includes the splicer, the CT50 cleaver, a hand stripping tool, as well as other accessories like the splicer's charging cord, a USB cable, and the set plates for use with fiber holders or fuse connects. The 41S Plus ships with the standard sheath clamps installed from the factory, but also includes the SP01 set plates as well as 250 micron and 900 micron fiber holders to replace the sheath clamps should you opt to splice using the fiber holders instead. The splicer can be set up to match a wide variety of work styles and workflows, so taking the time for setup will keep splicing the simple and quick process it should be. Following good setup steps will allow you to adapt the splicer to your ideal workflow. A setup begins with determining whether you want to splice using sheath clamps or fiber holders. For those who are unfamiliar, the sheath clamps are the spring-loaded clamp arms on either side of the electrodes that hold the fibers in place during the splice. Similarly, the AD50 adapter plate comes pre-installed on the CT50 from the factory. To splice in this configuration, first slide on your protection sleeve, then strip about 35 millimeters of the fiber with the smallest hole of the stripping tool. Clean the fiber with the cleaning solvent and place it in the V-groove of the adapter plate. With the clean glass spanning both cleaver pads, cleave then remove the fiber from the cleaver and place it in the splicer's V-groove with the end of the fiber about halfway between the V-groove and the center of the electrodes. Close the sheath clamp lid to secure the fiber in place. If you're using 900 micron tight buffer fiber, strip off the outer coating in short lengths of about a quarter of an inch, and then go back over the stripped portion with the smallest hole of the strippers to remove any of the remaining 250 micron subcoating. If you're using 900 micron loose tube or a 900 micron forcation tubing, you'll need to swap out the standard S31A sheath clamps with the loose tube compatible S31B sheath clamps. The loose tube sheath clamps have a protrusion from the base of the sheath clamp to hold the fiber inside the loose tube to keep it from sliding around. Using the correct sheath clamp with loose tube fiber will help you avoid the annoying motor overrun errors. The fiber holders, also called chucks or sleds, are simple to use and allow a larger object to grasp when handling fibers. To splice using this method, you'll first convert from the factory setup by 1. Removing the sheath clamps from the splicer, 2. Installing the set plates in place of the sheath clamps, and 3. Removing the adapter plate from the cleaver. The adapter plate is the same size and shape as a fiber holder, so simply removing it allows you to load a fiber holder into the cleaver. Each fiber holder has a magnetic lid to hold the fiber in place and two guide holes to locate the fiber holder on the guide pins of the installed set plates. Once your setup is ready, simply load the fiber into the fiber holder with about 30-35 millimeters or an inch and a half of fiber off the end. Strip the coating off the fiber, clean, cleave, and drop the fiber holder onto the guide pins in the splicer to hold it in place. Splicing with fiber holders can improve ease of use and reduce handling errors during the splice. Once loaded in the fiber holder, the fiber doesn't need to be removed at all until the splice is completely finished. This means the cleave length will be the same every time and the end of the fiber will always land in the same place in the splicer. The next part of setup is choosing the operation settings that match your workflow. These can be changed at any point in the future, so don't hesitate to try different options when figuring out what works best. Turn your splicer on and go to Home then Splice Settings, then Fundamental Settings. In the Fundamental Settings menu, you can toggle the Pause setting and the Auto Start Trigger setting. Turn Pause On to have the splicer pause after fiber alignment is finished so you can inspect the fiber's preparation quality before they're spliced together. Turn the Auto Start Trigger on or off to adjust the level of automation you want to see in your splicing process. 
The final setup step is performing an arc calibration. Select the shortcut on the middle of the left hand side of the screen to open the arc calibration function. Prepare two standard single mode fibers as if you were going to splice. Load them into the splicer and press set or play to begin. This process should only take a few seconds and is not only a part of initial setup, but should also be done at the beginning of every day to keep your splicer running at peak performance. When using the 41S Plus in conjunction with the CT50 Cleaver, you also have the option of using Active Blade Management, which uses Bluetooth communication between the splicer and a connected cleaver to control the cleaver's blade position. When a certain number of bad cleaves are detected in succession, the splicer can command the cleaver blade to rotate. When paired with proper cleaver maintenance, this function helps you avoid the tedious task of keeping count of your own cleaves for every blade position by having the splicer keep the count for you. Under other settings, enable this feature in the Bluetooth settings menu and adjust cleaver specific parameters under the cleaver settings menu. There's also a shortcut to Bluetooth settings on the home screen on the right hand side along the upper edge of the screen. The 41S Plus is equipped with active fusion control and warm splice imaging to maximize your positive splice results. When active fusion control is enabled, any cleave angle between 3 and 5 degrees will activate automatic changes to the arc parameters to minimize the splice loss effects of larger cleave angles. Warm splice imaging is the algorithm that analyzes the image of the fibers while they're melted to capture more information about how the fibers were aligned. When the fibers are heated by the arc, the core tends to glow more brightly than the cladding. Analysis of the warm image allows the splicer to provide significant improvements to estimation accuracy over what is typically available with a cladding alignment splicer. After setting up your machine, pick a splice mode corresponding to the fiber type you're going to be using, and pick a heater mode corresponding to the shrink sleeves you have. Here, I have two standard single mode fibers, so I'll use SM Auto as my splice mode. Picking the right splice mode is one of the biggest contributors to splicing success, so be sure to identify the fiber you're using and select a splice mode that matches the fiber in front of you. For example, if you know you're splicing single mode fiber to single mode fiber, you'd likely start with SM Auto, SM Fast, or SM SM. Likewise, if you're splicing multi-mode fiber to itself, you'd probably start with MM Auto, MM Fast, or MM MM. Any splice mode having the word Auto after it will monitor arc power with each splice and make small tweaks from one splice to the next. This maintains your arc calibration accuracy as conditions change through the day. It's important to note here that this is not a substitute for daily arc calibration. Conditions like temperature, barometric pressure, and humidity all affect how much arc power you need in order to precisely melt the fibers. And since every day has different conditions, start the day with a quick arc calibration to get you started, then use a splice mode ending in auto to keep your initial calibration accurate as the conditions of the day evolve. Any splice mode that has the fast suffix will assume the correct fiber type is loaded, adopt the most recently calibrated arc power value, and perform the splice in as little time as possible. Splice modes without a suffix are considered special modes because these modes have an extended parameter list that you can edit in order to customize your splice recipe. Use one of these modes if you're splicing with a special type of fiber or if you have particular parameters you'd like to change. Choosing heater mode is relatively straightforward. Most of the time, fibers are protected with 60mm, 40mm, or Fuse Connect protection sleeves. However, heating profiles are available for other sleeves as well. After choosing your splice mode and heater mode, prepare the fibers to be spliced following the acronym SICKLE. That is, sleeve, strip, clean, cleave, and load. Sleeve. Slide a clean protection sleeve over one of the fibers you're about to splice. Strip. Use hand strippers or a thermal stripper to remove the protective coating from the fiber. If applicable, load the fiber into the appropriate fiber holder before stripping. Clean. Clean the exposed glass with a fresh, lint-free wipe moistened with only either FCC2 fluid or 99% or greater isopropyl alcohol. Cleave. Load the cleaned fiber into the cleaver, fully raise and then gently lower the cleaving arm to cleave the fiber. Remove the fiber from the cleaver before returning the cleaver arm to its ready position and load. Immediately after cleaving, load the fiber directly into the splicer without putting it down on any other surfaces. 
Putting the fiber down anywhere increases the risk of getting dust or dirt on the cleaved end of the fiber as well as in the v-grooves of the splicer. Never clean the fiber again after cleaving it. It might seem counterintuitive, but this will actually deposit more contamination onto the cleaved end of the fiber. If you develop good, consistent fiber prep habits, your equipment will thank you and your splices will speak for themselves. Once the fiber is loaded, visually verify the position of the fiber's ends. They should both fall about halfway between the inside edge of the V-grooves and the center line of the electrodes. At this point, depending on your operation settings, the splicer may start automatically, or you might have to press set or play. If you haven't turned on any of the pause options, then the splicer will proceed all the way through the splice, where you'll see the fibers come together, be inspected by the splicer, and get spliced together. Carefully remove the fibers from the splicer and position your shrink sleeve over the splice. If you're using sheath clamps, grab the fiber opposite the protection sleeve at the edge of the sheath clamp. Grab the protection sleeve side and lift the whole splice out of the machine, then tilt the fiber to center the sleeve over the splice point using your fingers as a position stop. After centering the sleeve, hold tension on the fiber and lower it into the heater oven. Fiber splices have a very good tensile strength, so don't worry about breaking the splice. When the heating cycle is finished, open the heater oven and lift your protected splice out of the oven and set it down to cool off. It will be quite hot, so wait a minute or so before touching it. The splicing and heating functions of the machine operate independently of each other, so you're free to begin the next splice as soon as the heating cycle starts. Now that the splice is finished, Take some time to do a few practice splices. Explore the settings. Try out different operation settings. Getting to know your equipment is the best way to set yourself up for future success. The better you know the machine, the easier it will be to identify issues and keep yourself up and running. The 41S Plus is a precision calibrated machine and operates within incredibly small tolerances. If you take some time to read the instruction manual, follow the recommended procedures, and keep up with routine cleaning and maintenance, your equipment will thank you and again, your splices will speak for themselves. The 41S Plus is the premier active cladding alignment splicer, boasting the Fujikura reputation for reliability and durability. When you walk up to the job site with your splicer case in hand, you have more than just a splicing machine. You have the 24-7, 365 live support of the AFL splicer team, along with our expertise and our dedication to your success. If you have any questions, comments, or issues, simply give us a call at 1-800-235-3423, option 3.